everybody. Welcome to our Mom Critiques Wild Bo, a proud member of the Duke Network. In this podcast, my sister and I force our mother to read Pale, Wild Bo's longest work. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. And I'm their mom, and I've changed my mind. I wouldn't go near the Forest Ribbon Trail. This episode, we are covering the first half of Arc 3, Out on a Limb. So, mom's got the giggles, because we've had some bad technical difficulties. <laughs> Uh, and for some reason, the longer it takes to resolve, the funnier it gets. So, um, <laughs> so she's just, Gosh, she's rough. laughing. So she'll, she'll be fine after a bit. <laughs> I'm but, crying. Uh, you're, you're, yeah, you're gonna be okay, mom. Okay. Um, this is what happens when you have a lot of Apple products, I guess. And they all suck. <laughs> well, so, true yeah, that. They so do. Hashtag, uh, anything but Apple. Hashtag USB-C for life. Yeah. Hashtag anyway. Apple sucks. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag, uh, I miss my brick phone um, when I was 13 years old. All right. We're going right. to go over the summary of the chapters, um, starting with 3.1. Uh, reeling from Nicolette's interference with the trail, everyone tries to make a plan. Verona goes home to get more supplies and has a bad conflict with her dad. The possum shows up with a notebook that Nicolette needs badly, and they make plans to deal. Miss goes into the path after Avery. And then we get some extra materials. Um we just get some notes on the others in the area. And 3.2, Lucy and Verona negotiate with the Belanges. Um, Avery comes back. Yay. In 3.3, we see Avery as she tries to adjust to normal life after escaping the trail. Um, and Snowdrop, who's starting to flex her spy skills, points the trio to a meeting of the town others, where they learn that Matthew and Edith have been elected the new leaders of the council. 3.3 extra materials it goes over timelines um the meeting that they saw um and eras for lack of a better term <laughs> um in 3.4 lucy asks mr Lai, one of her teachers for advice and then the trio goes to matthew and edith's house and are invited to dinner in 3.5 avery unsuccessfully tries to spy on john and then heads back to matthew's for dinner they ask some questions about the Carmine plot. Um, Edith Edith gets heated. It has to go inside. But um, I'm sure. Yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> she's a candle. Anyway, I she's was not really a proud when I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. When I wrote that, I was like, ha, huh, she got heated. Uh, no, and I, that's <laughs> a good one. Uh. <laughs> That was so <laughs> delayed, Mom. <laughs> so delayed. <laughs> yeah, but I was just trying to get my act together Keep and then together. do that. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. <sighs> Sitting here trying to think of serious things. <clears throat> okay, go. And then last but not least, in the 3.5 extra materials, we get a handy list of the gifts that they've received so far. All right. So, oh, Mom, man. what did you think of these chapters? Okay, I'm just hoping I can talk. I think I can. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I really liked them a lot. I mean, I think it's really fun because I'm getting to know all the characters a lot better. And it's, um, it's just really interesting. And Snow Snowdrop is my hero. Snowdrop's the <laughs> best. So um, that's really fun to have that character. She's wonderful. Yeah. Um. So... Some of these questions might seem a little bit out of order because, or like, it might sound like we're skipping things because our community submitted a bunch of really good questions. Um, mm -hmm. So, but first, we're going to start by talking about Verona's dad. Mom, what do you think Verona's dad's biggest issues as a parent are? <laughs> wow. I love talking about Verona's dad because I was pretty <laughs> wrong about him. <clears throat> and I mean, I I've never actually met a dad that's that... Um, inept but I think mm -hmm. he's really um, his biggest issues immaturity I mean he acts like uh, you know Verona is a lot more mature as he's just so um, I don't know and self-absorption you know mm -hmm. he just can't think past all the things he's given up and everything he's done for Verona you know so that she can live this wonderful life and um mm -hmm. and he can suffer at his two jobs he hates and stuff i mean he just he he just can't seem to get past that and he is mm -hmm. way too needy that's the worst he's so needy mm -hmm. so no he's got issues yeah for sure he's got a lot of issues um do you think yeah. that uh he is trying to, to depend on Verona more like a partner 
too much as opposed to like a child. Like a parent? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. Their relationship is, um, he's looking at her more as an equal or something rather than a father-daughter relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do you think Verona should do in regards to her dad? Yeah, I think, I mean, really, I think she's a little bit stuck. I think she needs to hang mm-hmm. in there and just do her best until she's 18. Try not to rock the boat. And um, at least he lets her go out and see her friends, which surprises me a little bit. He's so jerky, but she still gets mm-hmm. to go out and go over to a friend's house. And um, I think he cares about her in his own special way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she has a, you know, she has a bed to sleep in, a place, you know, that stuff is all important to her. And um, I know it's her home life is really rotten, but I think she should <clears throat> just hang in there. You know, two more mm-hmm. years, that's really hard, but um, well, she's, you know, but she, honestly, she's, she, o- she's only 13. She's 13. I thought she was 16. No. No. Oh, three, four, five. Oh, see, that's a long time. I'm almost yep. changing my mind and thinking <laughs> she should go try to live with Avery. They'll never notice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many kids in there. <laughs> I mean, honestly, just sneak one more in just there. Just sneak in there. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. What do you no, think about, that's like, a really long time. Like, so I know her mom doesn't live in town or whatever. What do you think about, like, should she reach out to her mom? Like, I'm surprised, I guess, that your first thought is Avery (laughs) and not her mom. Well, her mom doesn't seem good either. Um, Mm. I can't remember what the last thing is. Can you guys remind me? She... Did she go? Oh, she we went just know that she. Her, and that's when her dad went nuts and th- ruined all her art material. Um, right, because she mean, like didn't yeah, maybe buy she... yeah a present or something for her dad. Yeah, yeah. but that was for her own. Yeah, that, right. But for, I mean, yeah. yeah, maybe she should reach out to her mom for sure. I wonder why mm-hmm. she doesn't do that. I mean, because um, anybody would probably be better. And her dad acts like, mm. oh, I sacrificed all this so that you could live in the same home that you grew up in, you know, and stuff. I mean, that I don't think that's that important at all. It's a, It'd be mm-hmm. a lot better yeah. to live in a different place and have a peaceful, you know, a peaceful home than to just yeah. hate walking in the door and hate that your dad will see you and you have to deal with him. Mm. Yeah, that's really mm-hmm. hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wonder if well, she a lot does. Of- you guys have read ahead. You sh- You should tell me. <laughs> We're gonna tell you. <laughs> I know. <but> I- <laughs> right. Well, I was just gonna say a lot of Verona's chapters, um, when she's at home or like, you know, she's gonna go home or whatever, like make me really anxious and stressed. Like I feel like Wildbo really portrays because it's hard kind of to describe like what it is exactly that her dad does, but like just reading it is so painful and awful, you know? Um Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I think it's he not like it oh really he- well. Right, because it's not like, oh, he hits her, or he doesn't give her right. food, or he locks her in a room, you know, like, it's not, it's just like, it's horrible. <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, I don't really see the physical abuse, although I think she physically abused her dad. I mean, honestly, she, she really crossed the line when she spit in his face. That's like the worst, most insulting thing you can do to anybody, and she shouldn't have done that. I mean, that was... I, I don't care how mad she is. I mean, if you guys did that to me, uh, you'd be so locked in your room for a long time. No, no phones I mean, forever. I mean, <clears throat> can't. Can, I mean, I don't know. Looking at her, though, I feel like she was really pushed to the absolute limit, though. You know, mm-hmm. like I don't. Obviously, it's not a great thing to do. <laughs> and like, if you're thinking clearly, you're probably not going to spit in somebody's face. But like, she also like. I mean, he was. I feel like reading over that again, like he was being ultra, ultra controlling. Um, and she tried like to give him a hug and said, you know, and be like, please, if you give me like anything, just let me go. Cause my friend's in a lot of trouble. And I don't know. It just, he like, just like, wasn't like listening she, to her at all. Yeah. I know, it's I one of those things was... where it's like, you know, like the, you know, like, um, it was the last straw that just like kind of tipped her over. <laughs> Right. Really I, like. I get it. But, you know, that part didn't seem as realistic to me because he would have grabbed her after that. I mean, there's no way anybody would spit me spit in my face that I would just let them run off. I would grab them. And I don't know what I would do after that, but um, I wouldn't let them just stroll away or whatever happened. But, <clears throat> you know, and when she, you know, I would 
I, anyway, th- there's just that to me, that's like the worst thing. Of course, if she would have hit her dad in the face or something, that's the same, you know, really, really bad thing. Oh, who knows? It's hard to measure all that, but, um, yeah. I mean, I think I, I, I just read it as um, her dad being kind of shocked that like she, yeah, you know, um, cause I mean, I think it all just happened really fast and she kind of got mm-hmm. out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know as again, she's 13 too. I mean, that's not yeah. like an excuse to spit somebody like in the face, but like, you know, if you, I, I just, you know, like if you hear about kids acting out and stuff like that, um, if they're not in good home environments or, um, their parents are being kind of emotionally abusive or like just crappy to them like it's not uncommon <laughs> you know because obviously what she's been okay. doing hasn't been working you know yeah like no, her no, trying to do really... chores and her trying to like work with him hasn't worked and so you know she kind of screams in his face and spits in his face because it's you know something different at least <laughs> okay. um yeah I mean, no no i get it yeah i don't know that's kind of sometimes she doesn't, you know, I mean, I, not that I'm on her dad's side at all, you know, but I'm <laughs> thinking sometimes she doesn't anticipate um, enough what's going to happen. Like those time chapters before where she knew he wanted her to mow the front and back lawn, the whole thing. Um, maybe she mm-hmm. just didn't have time, but I'm thinking, man, if you really want to go out and get some freedom, you know that he's going to insist on the dishes, the lawn, you better just do it. And then, um, mm-hmm. but maybe she really did, you know, try trying to um, do all those things so he doesn't have so much am- ammunition, but he'd probably mm-hmm. find something else. He's really well, so I think needy. If, um, not trying to like poke holes in all your arguments and all that <laughs> but <laughs> no, um, go for i remember it. <laughs> at least that section like um she was purposefully like had been doing chores for like two hours oh, okay. um to yeah. try to do that same thing and when he came home instead of saying oh thanks the house looks great he said oh well you need to mow the lawn <laughs> you know yeah no, um, i remember and, that that's true you could yeah win. And I'm, I'm just like at least if <laughs> i mean if you're 13 year old is i mean i mean hell if you're I mean, honestly, if your 17 year old spent two hours doing chores, you know, but not to mention your 13 year old, um, you should be like, wow, thanks, honey. You did such a great job. Like, this is so nice. You did this, you know, for me. No, um, that's as exactly opposed to, right. You know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, obviously, she's not getting anything good from like, I mean, she's trying to already head off, like, you know, all his, uh, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's not working anyway. You know, I feel like he'll always find something else. Yeah. Mm. No, no, you're right. He will. But yeah. Yeah. He's, he needs lots of therapy and stuff, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And she also needs to get out of there probably. She unless needs he some really yes, she does. change. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We all do. Um, <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, all right. So kind of a different turn. Um kind of jumping ahead a bit um because we know about like melissa um she like fell off the top of the cheerleading pyramid basically and yeah um really messed up her leg real bad um and uh we kind of saw her and her interaction with her friends um and what do you think about melissa's situation um do you think she's pushing her friends away um do you think her friend should do more to insist that she hangs out with them um and what do you think is going to happen with her in the future? Yeah, well, that's a lot of guessing, but um, I, <laughs> yes, <it is. laughs> I didn't, you know, I mean, really, I, from just that one, it was, you know, a few paragraphs or pages. And I, I don't see this big, huge um, problem with her friends. I think they're just being um, teenagers and they, they care about her and stuff, but there's, you know, there's a party or there's friends going over to this one place where she can't follow. And so I see them being a little bit selfish and doing that. Um, they, it would have been a lot better if they would um, make an effort to hang out with her, you know, wherever she can go and whatever she can do at least mm. a few times, you know, they don't need to do that every day. I wouldn't think, but, um, but make sure they all either, either one or two of them or else their their gang, you know, that they all um, make an effort and like, Hey, let's go over to, her house or go spend some time with her, you know, someplace and bring some pizza and do something she can do. But um, Mm -hmm. I don't think they really did that. But I don't see it being, um, I don't think anybody was that 
angry or insulting or anything like that. I think that she'll get back with her friends. But actually, okay. it's going to take her a long time, though, to recover. So um, it could damage that relationship a bit unless they're a little more giving, you know, for her. Sure. Yeah, I, th- I think that's interesting because I feel like when I was reading it, you know, like they invite her, they offer, oh, you know, when she puts up an excuse about not being able to, you know, make it there and back in time, they're like, well, maybe we can get someone to drive us. You know, like they they do, yeah, they do seem to show that they want her along. But you're right. They don't say, oh, OK, let's not go. Like, let's stay with you. Um, or they don't yeah. say like, oh, tomorrow we'll all, you know bring our lunch yeah. and like hang out with you and i didn't think about not just like them not including her but them not like doing something that she could do um and i do think that that's important um not that they're like awful or anything like that but just um if you really really want to show melissa that she's included that would be the best way to do it yeah and usually yeah. there'd be just one person in the group that would be that kind or or thoughtful that would um maybe think of that and suggest it to the rest of the group, you know, and, um, but they mm-hmm. seemed, you know, they seem pretty good. Hopefully that'll happen. Okay. Um, so how has reading Snowdrop's dialogue been for you? Um, has it been hard to understand her and what's your favorite Snowdrop moment? <laughs> okay. Now I just love Snowdrop and I know everybody else <laughs> does. I mean, she's really fun and cute and um, I really enjoy the di- dialogue. I mean, at first it was, the very first of it, I didn't get it, you know, of course, but, but, um, Mm -hmm. once I turned it around, um, I really like it. And there were a couple things I didn't get, you know, um, where I was confused about it, um, or it didn't make sense to me, but basically I think it's really sweet. And, um, favorite (laughs) parts, probably the milk part. I mean, the milk and the (laughs) chocolate milk and, and, um, and that stupid, uh, was it, was it that, cherry bomb person cherry pop <laughs> yeah <laughs> cherry pop yeah. cherry pop was that the cherry one bomb was like work. oh choke on it you know and or and chug I, it yeah choke, get, chug it chug it chug it get her some more you know and i yeah. just thought it was so dumb and and it's <laughs> like oh i hate chocolate milk it makes me gag and he's like oh yeah i'll go get you some you know so I, that part was really fun and then um also i love the t-shirts those are pretty awesome <laughs> they're so good that's awesome. they're pretty great mm-hmm. I mean, aesthetically so. off. I like that one. <laughs> I'd no. like, I, if you could be buy... fun to have one of those or one that said bad hair day or something, you know, that you can just <laughs> wear these shirts, you know. <laughs> I think Would you buy some shirts if they had them? Oh, oh sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I have a podcast, man. I'd have to, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know you could get them. You could sell them on the um, site. You have a bunch of people here that would probably love these. That'd That's be true. awesome. Yeah. Well, well, they I are. Mean, they are wild bows. No. And creations. wild bows sold some shirts. They are, and he's know. really does he do the um graphics on those? He does. Um he extras? does. See, those are amazing. Mm-hmm. He needs to do like he could do like a milk carton or a bottle, you know, some kind of thing. And, <laughs> oh, and that'd be cute. he could do some neat graphics. That would be cute. And just do that the would be cute. And have and, a little I know. <gasps> you could let's have like let's a ask lost, him to do it. You could have a lost like child and have snowdrop on it on the Aww. milk carton. Oh, that's like extra perfect, oh, right? Oh, that's so that's perfect. So sweet. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I like it. I mean, not like he's like. I mean, obviously, he has a ton of free time, so I'm sure yeah. he's going to get right on that. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be I, cute. Uh, you never know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who wants to do fan art, you should do a milk carton with like snow a drop. lost oh. uh, snowdrop on it, because that would be or a lost, well, lost on it. <laughs> um, Very cute. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, taking another tangent. What do you think about Avery and Verona's fights over Alpi as a familiar? Um. Do you think that one of them should take her, and if sh- so? Which one? And if not, why? Okay. Um, I guess, I guess I'm not sure what the reason is um, to take Alpi. Um, I think Verona likes how she looks and um, <laughs> Avery likes her. I think it's, I think they both like her because of the um, Scottish accent. I think, <laughs> yeah. or, or so, you know, I think they're just doing the wrong reasons. Not that it's not that it's wrong, but I'm, I think that's probably a, um, something they should take a good look at what mm-hmm. um, traits 
their familiar has and stuff. But she'd <laughs> probably true. be kind of a fun companion to hang out with all the time. And um, and it's always nice to have somebody who, if you have somebody that you want to give nightmares or whatever, or creep <laughs> around at night, I guess that that'd be fun. So I don't or know if you what... want to be able to perfect your own Scottish accent. Yeah. Probably a good, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm just saying, I don't, I think they need to think it through a little more. Mm-hmm. I think that's reasonable. Oh, do you get to pick your own familiar? Uh-huh. So fam- you is have that to, how you say it? Famili- mm-hmm. Familiar? Familiar. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to, it's, it's kind of like a marriage. Um, mm-hmm. Heard it described oh, as okay. you kind of have to come to an agreement. Um for more or less, oh, so at least. you probably it probably wouldn't be good to pick more than one familiar, huh? Um, I don't think <laughs> you can. At least okay. most people. I mean, yeah, yeah, that might be a lot. Yeah, that might it's, be a it's, lot. It's, it's like you make promises to each other about the about the type of relationship you're going to have. Um, oh, okay. There can be benefits to others, um, and there's also benefits to the practitioner. And yeah. Um, often when it's described, it's described like akin to marriage, except you like, yeah. can't ever get out of it. <laughs> yeah. There's not like, a there's divorce. No, there's no divorce or annulment in familiar bonds, mm-hmm. but. Oh yeah. That's pretty important then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe if we're forsworn, but. Yeah. That's, yeah, but that's yeah. true. Anyway. Yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of a, I mean, that's not worth it. <laughs> No, <laughs> you know, if you're like I really hate this guy. You know, it, you're just, you're just gonna have to suck it up because <laughs> it's it's yeah. ain't worth it. Um, no. <laughs> so, also jumping forward, um, what do you think about the cabin party that Lucy is told about? Um, do you think they Shh. should go? And if they do go, what do you think might happen? Oh, what could happen? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, no, absolutely not. But they will go because that's what they do. And um, yeah, it's just that definitely something bad's going to happen there. And the what mm-hmm. the weird thing I'm worried about, but I maybe I'm off base, but I'm a little bit nervous that they're anxious for Lucy to go because people have been kind of mean to her before, and she hasn't had any friends. And I'm wondering. Do they really want to be her friend all of a sudden or um, because she's doing her hair better or something? Or are are they going to do something mean to her? Mm. What do you guys think? Or I can't ask that. <laughs> so you think this could be some sort of like like prank situation where they're pretending to yeah. invite her, but they're planning on being mean to her? Yeah, that's what I'm worried. I would hate that. But yeah, I'm worried about that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I just, think I'm. I don't know if she hasn't had any friends before per se, but um, she's just mostly been close with Verona. Um, oh yeah, okay. I, maybe Avery didn't have too many friends, but Lucy. W- she's had that, issues, yeah. When they right. had Lucy that, um, or Avery vote, was home, she was at the bottom. Oh, right, okay, that's but true. Lucy, yeah. when they had that that vote thing, she that was class at the bottom of thing. the list. That was awful. Yeah, that yeah, that's really true. Bad. That was awful. So how does um, it turn to that for everybody's like, oh, come to it, Lucy? I don't know. I'd be nervous. Yeah, I mean that thing in particular was like in terms of like I think it was mostly like who had a crush on who type of thing. You oh, know? okay. Um, but that is a good point. Um, that's a good point. Because yeah. that's um, I don't know. You're, but that's I think that's valid to be concerned about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, something's uh, gonna happen. Something bad's gonna happen. You think so? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, definitely. Well, you guys have probably already read up to that part. Yeah, I mean, I it could be think anything. The have. choir could come. <laughs> the choir. Do you is think they will? Come to this. Do I think they will? Yeah. Let me think about this. Um. Oh my gosh, that'd be exciting. That'd be I'd, exciting. I'll say yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that they're gonna show. switch up their do you think they're gonna sing some more modern tunes <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh christmas is out it'd be quite you know it'd be cool not cool but oh, no but whatever <laughs> is if um they were all at this cabin and it was around christmas time and the choir came christmas caroling and it went all bad oh my you know? god <laughs> that'd be no, amazing serious. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? So it could be Christmas time. Oh. They could have a party and it's like, oh, we've got carolers. And they'd start and then it just goes all wonky where it gets out of tune and <laughs> people start, you know, ble- their mouths start bleeding and their teeth go start falling out. 
Oh, gosh. I want to see some Christmas Carol or others. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. yeah. No, that'd be a good chapter. It'd be good. What are some carols they could sing? Um, let me think. I don't even know. Are there any like messed up Christmas carols? Oh, oh come all you, so all ye so others, so you know. <laughs> let me see. Um, I mean, there's oh, like Santa Baby and Crab. See, ten most and disturbing they, Christmas songs of all time. They're probably published on oh, no. 2013. Yeah, Let's see. somebody got, got run Santa over Baby. by a wet. Yep, that one. Jeez, oh, let's not um, even go there. I'll be home for Christmas. Oh, how, how is that? Uh, it says that one. song. So apparently, uh, the song has been a- around for so long. Everyone forgets the lyrics are from the perspective of a World War II soldier writing a letter home. Oh my god, um, that's so and sad. And the kicker hits you like a ton of bricks. Bricks. I'll be home for Christmas if only in if my only dreams. Only in my dreams. <laughs> now, so. why did you have to ruin that song <laughs> oh, for me? I've so spent my whole I'm, life not knowing that. Now I'm going to think of this. The guy dies. The guy dies. Let's stop well, it. I'm Jen. sorry. Let, let's move on to other ones so that we can ruin <sighs> those. Well, he might um, not die. Th- he might just not make it home for Christmas. That's true. He might yeah, just not make it home. I mean, that's happened. Um, that's all right. Do they know it's Christmas, which is a, uh, let me see, a classic 80s charity single? apparently what? What does that um, mean? it's i uh. guess it's like the intention of the song was to raise awareness for the plight of starving ethiopians um, no, who don't know stop. it's christmas <laughs> and, don't know it's christmas so <laughs> apparently not. you guys are gonna oh, get- <laughs> okay and then like this this line is terrible <laughs> and oh, they just like tonight thank god it's them instead of you <laughs> whoa it's really fucking terrible wow, i know Merry christmas Gosh. I, yeah. Wow. Okay, that's a terrible one. Man. Hmm. Number seven is called Christmas with Satan, which I think we could just say. <laughs> oh, just <don't. laughs> yeah, you don't even need to go any further. We don't need to go into that. Um, There's a song. Number- Somebody wrote a song and sang it? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, really? Yeah. What is the yeah. matter? It was I mean, released in 1981. That. That's true. They might sing that. That might <laughs> that might that might fit. Oh, or fit with the God. theme. So um, number six is Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Right. Um, yeah. Number five, yeah. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. That's worse oh, than come on. Christmas with Satan. Really? Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> wow. Oh, number four is a john denver song so maybe you'll know this mom please daddy don't get drunk this christmas <laughs> wow i'm depressed <laughs> yeah that's depressing <laughs> wait i missed that one i know please every john daddy denver song john that's, how did i miss depressing. that one that that don't sounds get like... drunk this christmas i, I don't really... want to see my mama cry <laughs> that's terrible oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, um, John. number three oh, is sad. backdoor santa um which Ugh. it's a uh, says it's a double entendre filled filthathon oh, um, man uh, <laughs> okay that's that's good jim I can, got it i could read out no, some lines no, but no, i'm gonna no, not do it yeah. um <laughs> number two is baby it's cold outside which we understand why that um yeah. Or, well, if you it's don't, controversial, it's kind of, mom. There's no, no, a I, feminist I reading and a no, no, you I know. Get, yeah, no, yeah. I know. I'm just like you know. I, I think people take themselves too seriously, and that's all I'm going to say. That's it. <laughs> well, apparently, the they song really originated do. from like a couple um, that would yeah. sing it at the end of their Christmas parties, like to tell people to get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, <laughs> be like the, oh, the party's you over. Yeah, that's well. That's what I I read it on the wow. internet. So when we know oh, so that must has be, to be true. true, okay. Yes, it has to be true. Uh, um, but I think it's supposed. Yeah, it's supposed, it's supposed to be like they would sing it at the end of their parties when oh, people that's were like, funny. you know, when that's they're like great. leave. <laughs> yeah, that's um, pretty funny. That's good. The number one song is the Christmas Shoes, which I had never heard the song before, and I actually heard it for the first time this Christmas. And what the hell is like the song is like depressing as hell, like. <laughs> It's like it's it's basically like this guy is standing in line like in the store and this little kid um is in front of him and is basically like scraping his pennies together to get a nice pair of shoes for his mama who's been sick for a long time so she can look beautiful when she meets Jesus tonight. Holy shit. Oh, yes. <laughs> when she fucking oh. dies. Oh, let's 
Holocaust she's scene dying together. on Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> Like what no, is that wrong? Like a good hungry choir song. I mean, really, what? Oh, come on. Yes. Yeah. So that's oh, a terrible know, song. Um, I just thought ahead, of this Mom. one, and I'd like to hear it. I haven't, I haven't ever heard it, but I really like this guy. Um, his podcast called Mike Rowe. He's hilarious, you guys. And he, oh, Dirty Jobs he, guy. Yeah, Dirty Jobs. So he and okay. this country singer made up this song to to um, raise money for some great charity and it's called Santa's got a dirty job. And um, huh. so I heard, but I haven't actually heard it. So I, mean, I guess um, that makes sense. Cause going down the chimney yeah, is he's pretty going down the d- chimney dirty. and um, probably you know, flying and into bugs occasionally when oh, he right. gets low yeah. enough altitude. No, it's, no. and there's all that. They were talking either about reindeer poop flying, you know, you never know. That's he's, true. He's reindeer flying poop flying. 24 hours, you know. Inclement weather, around. probably some yeah. smog, you know, that makes yeah, a lot definitely. of sense. I like it. Okay. Yeah. So um, we have to listen to that sometime. But anyway, put that on your list. I know Micro is actually a really good singer from what I've heard. Yes. He's, he's, he's a, like an opera singer. He's such a good singer and, um, and he's so funny. And the thing that's, this is another reason I like him because he gets his mom on that podcast sometimes and she'll just make us die laughing without even trying. <laughs> She's like me. I try, I don't do anything to try to, but um, apparently I'm really funny. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was Mike Rowe. I recommend him. He's really good. All right. Okay. So carry on. What's another anyway, question? <laughs> Lucy mentions that she's thinking of taking John as a familiar. Do you think that'd be a good idea? I'd say yes. I like John and um mm-hmm. I think he'd protect her and I think they So like for the rest of her of life. Good together. This is a good idea. Possibly kind of. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean if I just had to say yes or no, I'd say yes. And okay. and they seem to remember a lot when in the beginning they kind of When he held her at gunpoint? Y- well, it might have been before that. <laughs> Or after that, it wasn't the gun. I didn't see any big, nice looks between them at that moment. But it seems mm-hmm. like, yeah, you're right. No, I still <laughs> no, say we're, yes. we're not saying anything. <laughs> I yeah, just no, wanted I to point yes. that out I, for you to think about. Okay, well, cool. it happened. You know, they made it past that, and that's good. <laughs> All right, okay. I like it. <laughs> okay, good. Um, what do you think about the whole interrogation um, of me to, er, Edith and Matthew? Oh, I loved it. That was great. It was really mm-hmm. uncomfortable. And um, <laughs> the only thing is they're absolutely hiding something. I mean, everybody knows that. And so it makes you, that was good because I'm waiting to see what comes out of that. And um, and the baby thing is, I think she's going to get pregnant or something horrible like that. Something's going to happen mm-hmm. that's going to be, can can he, can she get pregnant, I wonder? Well, ooh, wow. I don't know. So I can't even. Well, I don't get it. Well, so she's, she's a spirit, in Edith, but she's in that body. Oh, she, James she could, is, right? Right. So, I mean, as far as we like, know, understand, Edith James's body slash Edith's is, body still works. It's still living. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of weird. I'm not going to think any further than that, but she could get pregnant and that would be a problem. Mm-hmm. And then this is the thing that's really getting, it's, it's really going to mess everything up is Matthew saying he has two jobs Edith and Kenneth. I mean, I mean, where did that come from? Where did that come from? He is so, and Edith definitely picked up on that and didn't like it mm-hmm. too much. And so mm-hmm. just something's going to explode after this. That is not, you know, Edith's not going to let that rest. So mm-hmm. um, I, I don't know what's happening with that, but do you that's think for like the next chapter, are you as suspicious like of, Edith as of Matthew or do you think one of them's like more sketchy than the other one to tell you the truth I don't know why but I'm really suspicious of Matthew I mean I think Edith was almost an innocent with in this that she she was really surprised like I was that Matthew said that that he had any the anything but you know absolute 100% love for her you know and Mm -hmm. um so I think she was kind of taken aback and I think he might have a few secrets, you know. Okay. Um, what do you think of Edith and Matthew being elected leaders of the Kenneth others? And who would you have chosen? Yeah. Um, for some reason, if they're leaders, the, the things that happened with them during this whole, um, during that 
um, interview with them and them becoming leaders makes me trust them less. Before I, I trust them quite a bit, but um, it, and it also seems like they're kind of the logical choice. I can't think of anybody else who, hmm. um, I mean, I wouldn't have chosen John and um, I mean, who, who else is there? We, Miss is gone. Miss I was going to say, you made one. your list, mom. You could look at your list. It's true. I made my list, but there's nobody else. So. You got the well, there's like two fae, like the fairy. Right. Um, two fairy. Wait, can you have fairy? You can have fairies be a leader? Oh, why not? Why not? Or, why not? Or, okay. I don't know. Okay, let me look at this. Char- Charles is out. <laughs> he, he <beat> out. <laughs> I mean, just in case oh, you were Charles. thinking. Okay. And, um, Alpie, I'd say no. And no fairies. No fairies. Those, you can't uh-huh. trust a fairy at all. And um, okay. John's just kind of dark. I mean, he'd be okay, but he'd be really depressing. So, and and um, oh, let's let's get one and of the goblins. the goblins. That'd be fun. Yeah. Jeez, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Um. So there isn't anybody. I mean, can we can we vote for Mister Lie? I like him. I mean, <laughs> I can mean, feel like he's not a part of the get it others. So, well, he's uh, as far as other. we know, at okay, least. So, I yeah, mean, who true. knows? Okay. Maybe he is. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they said something just, about him. Just being drag a robot. him in there, be like, hey, we're <laughs> just gonna this is a big shock, but magic's <laughs> real and we have all these monstery he'd people be, and he'd you're be kinda be the... awesome. But it might be too much. <laughs> yeah. So I think they were the I think they're the logical choice. Mm. Okay. Okay, and I don't remember if we've been asking this consistently, but I wanted to double check, Mom, since we're we're kind of getting more into the mystery and getting more into the, you know, all the things that are wrapping around. Um, who do you think killed the Carmine Beast? <laughs> okay, my first my first thought is Matthew. But you know, it's almost too obvious. So mm-hmm. I have a very close second, and that's um I don't know how to say your name, um, Marasika. Marissa is how Marissica? we've been saying it, but uh-huh. yeah, Marissa. Um, because she's she's tricky and secretive, and she has something. She didn't like the beast. They had some kind of a conflict because she blinded the beast for two weeks or two weeks before or something. So, mm-hmm. um, and she's got these powers. What is it? If she thinks something enough or whatever, she can make it happen. <laughs> There was, there's some kind of weird thing that she has. Like glamour? So it Are might be glamour. glamour. I'm, okay. I guess so. The glamour is confusing to me, but um, yeah, I think it might be that. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can, if glamour is powerful enough to kill somebody, but possibly. Hmm. Yeah. But she's my second choice. Okay. So or else would you elaborate also, a little bit um, more on Matthew just because you said more about Marissa and I'm curious to like, why Matthew? I guess just because he's suspicious. Because. Yeah, he's just, that's it. He's suspicious. I mean, he's always been there. He's always acts like a really nice guy, like he's on your side, but there's something lurking there, you know, like Mm -hmm. this uneasy thing. Like he's, he, he is, but he's, he's not really genuine or you can't really trust him. And now it's really coming out with, um, after the barbecue, I'd just be nervous. Hmm. I mean, mm. You know, like check your chicken twice before you take a bite into that. I don't know. I don't trust him. So I, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't have any, it's like a, just little hints. Like a gut feeling or something. Okay. Yeah. Or just, okay. it's mainly, it's mainly that um, shift that he had about Edith. I'm like, oh, what's happening here? You know, it's not like mm-hmm. I thought it was. Okay. I yeah. mean, to be fair, I think he like loves his wife. He just like feels like he has to take care of her or something like look after her a little extra than like if she no that could be it or it could be something else malia <laughs> it could be that's, that's yeah. true mm. uh. <laughs> um were you about to say you thought maybe someone else sorry i interrupted you to ask about matthew oh i know i don't think so okay you mean a third guess yeah i thought you were Gosh. saying like oh maybe it's somebody else but Maybe I misheard you. Who else could it be? Let me look at this list again. <laughs> We're not saying it has to be a third person. There's no, I just Mr. Just... Lie. There's Mr. Lie. There's you Mr. go from you know what should be the leader to the, sounds he like the Carmine. It sounds like lie, mom. <laughs> Ooh, that's it. And there's also Louise. We haven't there's talked also about Louise. her in a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh gosh. That's okay, sneaky. now I better go from there. Yep. <laughs> 
All right. <laughs> I'm going to move on to our listener questions. Okay. So we're going to start Ooh, off with yay. Elliot. Um, and Elliot asks, how do you think the negotiation with Alexander and Nicolette went? Was the Kenneteer strategy a good one? And again, just to remind you, Kenneteer is Brona, Lucy, and Avery. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good question. I, I, um, actually, I really think it did go well because they got Avery back. I mean, that's what they mm. really wanted was to get her out of there. And, um, so I think it was a win. It's just that, that Alexander is a sneaky one and, um, doesn't do anything straightforward. And so I have this bad feeling that he got, he still got the best of the deal. And I don't, mm, I don't yeah. know how that is. It's probably going to get them when they, um, in, when they enroll in his school, they're going to have troubles. And I don't know what that is, but, um, but yeah, he's going to have some sneaky things that he worked into this deal that we weren't even aware of probably. Interesting. So you think them following the advice of the fairies to like act childish and stuff like that, that you think that worked pretty well? <laughs> uh I don't know if it threw Alexander Alexander off his game though. You know, I, um, Mm. um, I, I mean, it seemed to work, but I just, it, it worked as far as them getting what they really needed, which was Avery. But I Mm. just think it's hard to trick him, Mm. you know, but, um, yeah, I, and that's why it's fun to get into the book more because then you get to know the characters a little bit more. I'm totally guessing this stuff, you know? Sure. I, I really liked how, um, like, I did feel like Alexander was kind of coming in to take control of the situation, but also, like, try to not take responsibility. And I really liked how they called him yeah. on it a bunch about, like, either you step up and take responsibility for this or we're talking to Nicolette and, like, go away. Um, I thought oh, that was pretty true. effective. They did, they did a great job with that. That's true. Yeah. I liked that a lot. <laughs> um, okay. Jarl Zarl asks, which of the gifts have the girls received that you would most like to have for yourself? If you were a practitioner who could use them. Ooh, that's so fun. That's a great <laughs> question. I love these questions. Um, I'd like to attend the Blue Heron Institute because that's where stuff's going to be happening. I just want to say it's so funny that you're like, I would love to walk the Forest Ribbon Trail. And then the next episode, oh, you're just... like, I would never walk the Forest Ribbon Trail. And now you're like, I'd love to attend the Blue Heron Institute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no you're kind of right no that's that's my personality malia remember that Fair. shirt that you guys got me after i got stuck in the snow going through that thing that you said was closed it was uh it wasn't <laughs> we said really it was closed, closed but it was you mean well, the, like it the wasn't sign really closed they had, the sign they had that said it was go. pretty closed it was like it was kind of closed but it you was know, like but taped anyway. off wasn't it no, I think there was a little. There, just, there was a gap. There was a small gap. A gap. That there was a you gap. You shouldn't have gone through. But, but that's what makes it fun. So, when, so I. I don't remember this, the shirt. Yeah, I don't either. What does yeah, the shirt say? It's like, uh, um, I don't know. I it's in my. I've got to dig it out. I'll dig it out for next time because it was really. What it, it was really cool. Something about um how I um how I'm really super brave until I actually you know until i actually ran into the i i don't know what it was you know but that i just know that i do that with stuff where i i really never think anything bad's gonna happen i'm kind of adventuresome <laughs> and i like i'm like... a risk taker and like mm-hmm. when i do a ski when i go skiing um i i choose the um the run that i'm gonna go on by the name you know, and my husband's there, like looking. He stops and he's looking at the map. You know, that's so irritating. He, it's cold, and he stopped. And your hands are cold. You have to get get your hands, maybe even take your gloves off, and you have to just stand there while the wind's blowing and everybody's wishing by you. And and he's like, let's look. You know, and it, to me, that's really irritating. You know, you just go and you find this. You know, this one. I remember at Breckenridge is this one called Tom's Baby. Let's go. Let's go down Tom's Baby. That's I've never been on that one and then we get on it and and i'm like in tears like oh my you know because it's all, <laughs> it's a black double diamond with all these moguls and this narrow thing and i'm like going and every turn i have to like fall down and and get up again <laughs> and just go oh my gosh and just oh, slide mom. down so you think i would get it learn change and i just <laughs> learn we all learn and i just don't i don't know that's like something are you guys like that? Je- 
I I don't know if Malia think, is. Jen, you're you're a little bit like a little that, bit. right? I'd say yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Qu- yeah. I wouldn't say quite I to like the extent plans. you are, but she, you like plans? I mean, really, you would stand there. I mean, sometimes, there in like the cold, not all the time. Take your gloves but off. I, get, I also don't get as cold as you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, but I'm kind of learned dad's that's trick, one of my... and I just, you know, oh brother, <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't believe. I'm not a believer. So, yeah, I can't um, get Ben to do it. Ben, oh my god, the other day, um, it it was like 48 degrees, and he okay. had. I think he had a long sleeve shirt and a jacket on or something. And we walked from the house to the car and he got in and he started audibly shivering. And I was like, this is, this is in your head. Like, this, like, no. And he was like, no, it's real. I'm like, no, n- 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 no. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Anyway. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Wait, back to my question. I want more gifts yes. though. So um, okay. I want to go to school. Um, I want John's dog tags because, I mean, mm. if you ever get in trouble, and I would every once in a while, you can just call on John, right? And he'll be there. So yeah. Yeah, that's all that's you true. need. He would save you. And then um, some, there's one other one, and I don't know what it was about, but Avery got um, something from, how do you say it? Marissa. Marissa. Or you can Marissa. just say Mari. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. However you want and to say it. It was a um it was a way to change appearances. Now that would be the coolest. I mean you could Yeah, go, remember when she turned you, into a boy? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the oh, thing okay. they're talking about. Oh, that was so neat. And I think you could, you know, you could yeah, you could change all this stuff. You could be an animal, anything you want. I wonder if you could change into an object. That's kind of hard. But hmm. I don't know. Yes. Anyway, I think that's to. really fun. Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that'd be useful. Right. Cool. Um, I'll go to our next question from Sleeping Beluga. They ask, what traits do you think make an effective practitioner? Do the Kenneteers have any of these? If so, which ones are the strongest? Or which ones have, hold on, which ones have which the strongest? Yeah. So like okay. which Kenneteers have which traits the strongest? Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> um, is the lack of these traits necessarily a bad thing for the Kenneteers? Okay. Oh, that's a good question too. Um, the first thing I thought of was courage. Um, you have, Mm -hmm. I mean, to be one of these girls, you'd need courage. And, um, should I list the traits first or you want me to say who I think has the most courage? I don't know. Um, maybe Um, list the traits and then talk about whether you think they have them or not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Courage. And then I thought loyalty, because I think, um, it's important for the three of them to be loyal to each other. And, Mm -hmm. um, brains is a good thing. They were, they're pretty smart and I don't know what this trait is, but they're not, what's, what is it when you don't just, um, you're not impulsive. You, you have enough control to think things through. Like deliberate? I guess so. Yeah. Meticulous? I I just, yeah, maybe. I just, I just thought of this because, um, they don't, they do meet together and really try to think out before they do interviews and stuff, how they can Mm -hmm. be tripped up, you know, and that's really important with what they're doing. Um, cause I could see me just jumping ahead and saying whatever and getting myself in trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, speed is good. Perseverance. Because they just don't give up, determination and self sacrifice. So those are what I came up with. Okay. So do you um, think it's important that all practitioners have all these things, or just the Kenneteers? Because like, do you think it's important for practitioners in general to be loyal? No, I was thinking of the three of them. Okay, practitioners. So I'm thinking about all the like Matthew's kind of a practitioner, right? And sort of, he Charles was one. Sort yeah. Of- Charles also was I mean, one. Who, is John? I mean, who else is a practitioner? No, Mm-mm, no John is Nicolette not. and Alexander are practitioners. Oh, that's right. Okay, let me think about this. I mean, courage has got to be a big one. Mm-hmm. Loyalty, probably not. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was thinking more of the three of them. Um, brains would definitely help. <laughs> At brains mm-hmm. and speed, perseverance, determination. All four of those would be important. Self-sacrifice, not necessarily, because... Um, you can, you know, that's good if you're in a team and you, um, really have these friends you want to protect, but if you're just on your own, like Alexander, it it doesn't, you don't need to do that. You just want to, you know, you just want to (laughs) win. So, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but, um, now that I think about it, Avery, this wasn't part of the question, but Avery going into that, um, forest ribbon trail. 
reminds mm-hmm. me of me be- going down Tom's baby. Because <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, because because she just thinks, oh, man, I don't want to pass up this opportunity. This will be adventure and and amazing <laughs> and really interesting. And and that's what I would that's why the first um, the last podcast, I was like, yeah, I, I'd so be there. And now this one, I'm like, there is no way I'd go near that thing. Because I'm sure <laughs> I didn't go down Tom's baby a second time. That was it. <laughs> Tom's yeah. baby. Yeah. Anybody near Breckenridge, you try that one and let me know what you think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <was> rough. <laughs> Leave a comment. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Would you do it? Yeah. <laughs> or have you done it? Did you regret it? Yeah, Did you it. pick it just by the Did name? Did you regret it? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, I want to know if anybody skis and picks the trails just by the names. <laughs> or, so you don't um, look at the like you don't look at like at the symbol the, at the symbol at all. Oh uh, well, you know I I'm kind of cocky. I thought I was good enough, except I I'm kind of good <laughs> enough to do black to do black in a really um, awkward way. I can get down without breaking something, but um, I'm I'm pretty much an intermediate skier. I can do black, but double diamonds is is just like not a too much. not a good place for me to be. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I'll still do it. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'll do the back bulls, but I'm now I'm old already. I'm talking more about you know twenty years ago. I don't know what I'd do now. Mm. I might still do it because it's probably my last chance. By the time I got up skiing again, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You've never been rescued before. Get, you, <laughs> have I been rescued? I have been surfing rescued, but not not skiing rescued, I don't think. Mm. Or I blocked it out of my mind. <laughs> well, I'm saying you could cross that off your list. <laughs> if you want to get no, I don't have put any you big in that desire that, like... to be rescued. No, <laughs> I, it's not. It's not one of my bucket list things. Yeah. <laughs> that's great that would be a good one yeah i want to be rescued by the when ski you patrol get surf res- rescued oh like, at um, are you doing that big of waves waves oh yeah it was um and and the sad thing was who was with me i think it was cheryl i always get my friends into this like oh this will be so <laughs> fun and it, this one was um makapu or else Sandy Beach. Mm. I don't. Oh, it's Sandy Beach. That was Sandy a killer. Beach. Oh, That's geez. such a bad Those beach. I'm an d- idiot. D- yeah, and the red flags were out. You People know? die like, there. Like on. that's like the number one fatality beach in Hawaii, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say probably. Yeah. Oh my god. It was dumb. And the red flags were out. And so you oh, know, geez. I got my friend. I'm like, okay, now's a good time. Go, 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 go. You've got to get beyond the waves. And we did. And then we realized we it was with Cheryl, and we couldn't get back. Or we die. And so the great, you know, after like a half an hour of just treading water, we were way out with the waves. I think the lifeguard got nervous about us because I wasn't, I don't think I was asking for any help. I think we were just like, crap, what are we going to do? So the the lifeguard comes out. We're like, oh, good. You know, all happy. And he gets us and he basically pushes us into a wave. So we just Uh. died there. You know, like, thanks a lot. Buddy, and so we both just like tumbled onto shore, swallowed Jeez, a bunch of God. sand and water. I'm like, and then had to do a report. I'm like, oh my God, that was brutal. I mean, yeah, so it's wow. not quite the way I envisioned being rescued. So, yeah, there. I was picturing like a jet ski or something that he just no, literally that like would be almost so killed you. Cool. <laughs> Like here you go. That would be really cool. No, it was a it was the lifeguard on his board got out there and just basically like was kind of grouchy, like, okay, get on, you know, and and <laughs> takes us all the way out to the wave thing and then pushes us off so that we tumbled into the surf. It was insane. Dang. <laughs> I know. All right. <laughs> that's so that's some tough me. love right there. <laughs> yeah. Tough love. Yeah. Yeah. So i I can cross that off my list. Did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, he was probably just irritated, like, oh, these stupid Howleys going and trying to be cool, getting out <laughs> yeah. in the waves, and they don't know what probably. the heck they're doing. And, um, you know, I'm tired of this. And and so he probably knew that we'd make it okay, which we did. Probably. It kind of hurt yeah. my pride a little bit, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> oh, so at least gosh. if you had a jet ski, it might hurt your pride, but you'd look cool on a jet ski. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, I'd be okay because I'd be like, yay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's <sighs> funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, to follow up on the question, do you think so? You think Avery 
Or I thought, were you pinning the different traits you came up with to the can of tears or? Yeah, I didn't. Um, I didn't even get there. So, okay. so <laughs> Avery is the, sp- Avery's the speed. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't say she's the brains after what she did. So I'll say, um, well, you know, she, t- she did like me. No, she's good, but she's like me. So, um, <laughs> she's the speed perseverance. Um, I think they, no, I'd say perseverance is Lucy and Avery. I can't give that to Verona cause Verona keeps wanting to turn into a cat. So <laughs> mm-hmm. I think she keeps wanting to give up. And Mm. um, determination, who would that be? Lucy's totally determined. Avery, too. I don't know about Rona. Yeah, I don't know. Self-sacrifice. Avery is right there. (laughs) Lucy would do it, too. And I don't know about Verona. (laughs) Poor Verona. (laughs) This is harsh, Mom. (laughs) Well, I'm trying to self-sacrifice. She's she's probably, they're probably all three. Loyalty, yeah, they're all three loyal to each other, and courage, they've all got it big time. Yep, mm-hmm. you guys nice. agree? There's probably a lot of traits that he that There's this a lot of um, sleeping beluga is like. Why didn't she say that? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no, because I didn't think of it. I don't know. That's fine. It's <laughs> That's kind of hard question. to know, yeah, but I think these are good um, ones. Yeah, I think okay. so. Um, okay, so Megafire asks a wonderful question that I love. Um, which of the Kenneth others would you want to have over for dinner? <laughs> that is such I I love this question. That's wonderful. And I would invite um Megafire first of all over for Aww. dinner Aww. because I That's just think nice. that'd be fun. <laughs> yes. And um I really I like John and Miss. I would have them over and um because John, you know, he probably nobody invites him over for dinner and he doesn't eat Aww. much, but that's not the reason. He's just, I like him because yeah. he doesn't seem real likable, but I like him. And Miss, she's <laughs> she's really interesting. Yeah. And you'd have to yeah. have Snowdrop over. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she would then, eat all the food that know, John doesn't eat. Oh, that, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And it would, because it would just be a great conversation. I mean, it'd be really mm. great. And then, and then I'd have to have all the goblins over, but I would make them sit outside because, you, know, <laughs> you, you, you know, you don't let the goblins um, come Inside. right into your that's... dining room. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, that's that's you know, a good point. I know better than that, but they'd be really, they'd be <laughs> really interesting because they're going to be having food fights and stuff, but I really like the goblins. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah awesome. And then I know Megafire wants to keep going with this question just to check. Um, has your opinion changed regarding which can a tear Jenny and I remind you of? It seems like now Avery reminds you of you, which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. If, if you don't remember what That's you said so before, funny. just. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea um, what I said before. So you guys got to let me know if I got this the same or not. But mm-hmm. okay. Let me think about this. Verona. Because I, I don't know if I can um, remember either, to be honest. But no, oh, I remember. <laughs> Okay, okay, I good, know thanks. what it is. Verona um, is absolutely Malia because um, Malia keeps stuff. <laughs> Malia, because you keep stuff inside, like you keep it inside until it just comes bursting out, and you've done that all your life. Well, I don't, true. and it's really That's frustrating true. as a mom. I'm like, please, Malia, and just talk to me. Tell me it's frustrating where. for me too. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then when it comes out watch out and you're like well crud i didn't know you know because how are we supposed to know if you don't tell us but man yeah, uh, that's that's, that's malia yeah and um, yeah you did not say that last Lucy, time but i i like it i didn't that's so no. funny <laughs> okay so lucy is absolutely jenny and yep. this is because she is big on justice and being fair. And I, I don't even know how that is a thing, Jenny. But but that what is you. You, you. Dad's really into being well, fair. I, oh, my God. He is so yeah, maybe much. I got That's it from how Dad. it came. Yeah, you did. Because remember, like, every time I give somebody anything, he's like, you make sure you do that on for the other kid. And you've got to call and do this. And I try to be really fair. But he You're makes really me fair. scared. You're really fair, I mom. am really fair, but he makes you <laughs> he makes you nuts about it. But I'm not like yeah. dad kind of fair or Jenny kind of fair. No, these guys are <laughs> into justice. Fair. Yeah, no, they it's justice. Yeah, they're really um. So that's need to say. Yeah, all right, it's fair. It's really it's a great thing. I like that. Well, thank you. Lee, yours isn't so great. You need to get over it. <laughs> oh my but, god. Um, <laughs> That's, yeah, because it's real easy to get over stuff like that. 
a lot of people really like Verona mom. I think you should be nicer to her. <laughs> okay. I didn't say I didn't like you. I really like you. And <laughs> no, maybe I said there's Verona. Some, maybe, I like Verona. She's awesome. Okay. And she deserves so much better. And Indeed. um I really did I say I didn't I really like her. Yeah. Okay. I like all these guys. <laughs> I like you too, Malia. I just think it's a bad mom. idea to keep your emotions in. You're welcome. <laughs> it's it's not that are. I'm it's that my my brain doesn't make words when I'm really upset. Wow. You know? So I have a hard time saying anything. I'm not But then everybody knows that. I'm usually not trying to be passive aggressive. I just literally can't say anything. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah, but you know what right. happens I'm- is when you do that, then I put all these words in your mouth and then I yeah. just I say something to make you mad, you know? Sometimes. Like, yeah, like all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next question. Um, hopefully I pronounced this username right. Quaysed? Is that how you say it, Malia? I don't know. I might say K said, but either one. K said. Because there's no there's you a Q either. there. Yeah. That's true, but K said, Quay said. I mean, I don't know. Q way said. Um <laughs> what do you, uh, they ask, uh, what do you think about Matthew and Edith as a pair? Okay. Yeah. So um wow, I think they're a very interesting pair. I really um both both of them, especially Edith, she's really um, a complex spirit. You know, it's really interesting, <laughs> and it's really it's interesting. But um, I see things changing there, and trouble. I see a lot of trouble happening, and hmm. um, it's because Matthew considers Edith a job, and then there's baby, the baby. Hmm. So yeah, yeah, it's sad because it seems like they both want a baby, but it like I mean I don't know. I think they could adopt. I don't know if it's is it ethical to like adopt. What would they be able to adopt? Because, huh? Yeah, no. Like they can't they adopt like innocent child. Baby. They can. It's fascinating. Anyway, but but they're gonna have a baby. You watch. Wait about five, to six chapters. Let's give it a while. <laughs> <laughs> Just six chapters. <laughs> They'll be, at least the pregnancy will come. It, it might. Oh, they geez. might not okay. have a baby then, but. Yeah, something's going to happen. And then the family's going to be all happy. It's like, Edith, yeah. you didn't go to Just college, the rate of at this... least you're going to have a baby. <laughs> the rate of the story, Mom, <laughs> that'll be like tomorrow afternoon in the in the story, you know? Like, <laughs> I feel like the story's only been going for like two weeks, tops. Oh, no, really? Oh, we got to get on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll start reading right after this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway um i'm easily impressed s for your final thoughts on miss now that she's gone um do you think she had the girl's best interest at heart was she secretly evil is she coming back etc okay and um that's the best name i'm e- easily impressed <laughs> and i'm glad you are mm-hmm. and um no i don't <laughs> think she was secretly evil i i think it seemed I think she was pretty straightforward. She seemed to have the girl's best interests at heart. And she was such a neat character. Even though she's gone, I feel like she's going to pop up later. I mean, she's in Do, that um, mm-hmm. because she's going to escape. There's something that's going to happen and she's going to escape the trail again. And remember how she mm-hmm. did that? And she, how did she do it? She, somebody else had to go in her place or something happened. Mm-hmm. No, but what was it? I don't remember. Oh, it was like somebody was walking the up steps and they missed a step and she, yeah, she stepped into their place. So what happened to that person? They're probably still there. Yeah. So she'll probably do it again. Okay. I mean, because she needs um, to come back. Okay. <laughs> well, it's interesting. I feel like you were very suspicious of Miss either the last time we talked. So you just are like, now nah, she's good. Yeah. Do you, think it's, good. do you think it's because she like decides to do this thing for avery and leave that you think oh okay yeah. she's probably good okay yeah that's what made that's what made me think that yeah cool doesn't mean i won't change my mind later when she comes back <laughs> <laughs> next question is from coro and they're asking um say that the three of us were living in kennett and instead of picking three teenagers the council opted for a more traditional coven of three witches and one family to awaken what masks do you think each of us would pick and how would we specialize given the others available and needs of the situation? Um, okay. So this is a really fun question. That would be really fun for fun the question. three of us to be in this. So um, for Jenny, I picked a mouse and I just, this, I had to pick this because when she was a little girl, um, 
<laughs> much to my, I mean, much to my protest, she made me go to the <laughs> store and pay money to buy two mice. And I was so against this. And I'm like, mice are something that you trap with a mouse trap and you kill. You do not pay money and get mice to put in a cage in your house, you know? And I stayed with that for the longest time. And you two were both like ganged up on me with your father. And that was really wrong. And so dad would, dad would look at me like, he'd, he'd come in like, what do you think? I think it'd be good for them. You know, a little mouse, what harm could that be? And I can't believe I gave into this because I, I like stand up on chairs or I used to, I think I'm tougher now, but I, when, when mice, you know, go by, cause they're, they're, they're creepy and they, you know, they want to <laughs> climb up your legs and bite your toes and all that stuff. You know, I don't like them. And so, um, so anyway, I end up going to the, to the, um, pet store paid a bunch of money for these two little you know bald looking mice just ugly they mice. were not bald they were very cute they, they had they were cute. they were just they were so not cute and they were well, they literally were bald. white spot on did her head and that was so cute did you mm. realize that you named your daughter the same thing as you named your mouse i just realized that <laughs> lily I did I mean, not name have... her after the mouse. I've just always liked the name Lily, know. but Liliana yeah, but... is uh, a more new name. Um. Yeah, but <laughs> we call her Lily. I, I'm going to think of that mouse now every time I do I like talk the name. to her. I like the name. And okay, so Lily was my Lily favorite mouse because Squeak... she was the cutest. Oh, brother. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she had a good and spot on her forehead. That's an oxymoron. Wasn't there also a scabbers? Oh yes, yeah! I was, was. Did you Lily, about Lily that? That's the, of, that's the rest of the story, or something. Well, anyway, Lily so got guess lost. what happened, yeah. you guys? So Lily. So the next morning, we wake up and Jenny's like, uh, 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 "Lily's gone." I'm like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean she's gone?" And so they had taken her into the bathroom, which is supposed to be like a safe place where you could close the doors and play with these mice on the floor. And somehow Lily found some little teeny hole underneath the sink and disappeared. So Jenny's all <laughs> upset. Crying. I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, you know, so. Yeah. Well, because uh, apparently and, mice and then, are also social creatures and they need, so they need another friend. mouse to be no. around or they'll get really sad. That's why there were two. Yeah. You know, so I was so ganged up on. So I had to be a good mother so that I didn't traumatize her for the rest of my life. I had to go back to the pet store again, buy another stinking mouse. And so then it was like three days later and who appears but Lily. Where did, where did she end up coming? It was at the bathroom or back in the cage or what happened? I don't know. But I was just like, Jenny's like, but... Lily's back. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> So then we had <laughs> three so mice. Then, so we had three. I, I, three mice, three blind mice. I mean, really. And so in this stinky little cage, and I don't know. I just, you know, I can't get over that. But anyway, that that's was, why Jenny that was very nice is going to be a mouse. Move. No, thank you. <laughs> that's yeah. reasonable. So Jenny's a mouse, <laughs> fair. and her her little um, what are they? You wanted p me to know the um, what you'll specialize in, or what your Yes. Abilities will be. So you'll have the ability to quickly disappear, to spy on okay. people, um, to steal food, and to be very quick. So those could be <laughs> come in handy. So good for you, Jen. And then Malia <laughs> is going to be a cat, just like Verona, because she loves her cat so much. There is just love my nothing else so she much. could be. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing else she could be. So we're going to have a little cat mask and um, then she's going to have the ability to jump really high and to be really sneaky and um, have sharp claws and nine lives. I'm done with so it. So that's Malia's thing. Yeah. All right. And then me, I picked a monkey because I just like <laughs> monkeys, you know, they're, um, they're fun. Like in the zoo, who doesn't go over and just watch the monkeys forever mm, because they're yeah. so funny. They swing all around. They can escape. They're really fearless. And um and really playful and fun. They're all, they also have a nasty side of them that I think some of them will spit at you or something. But I I just think they're really fun. I think it's throwing poop, but yeah, probably both. <laughs> oh, that would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. If, so just just to answer. ask, um, just to ask if you just off the top of your head, if you had to pick a mask for dad, 
<laughs> what would you pick for him? Dad. Dang. Um, okay, it's got to be. Well, I was gonna, I'm trying to think of a New Mexico one like a coyote, but that doesn't hmm. really work. Um, My dad's from New Mexico originally, so. Yeah. I just want to pick something big and um, like an elephant that could just plow down mm. whatever is there, mm. you know, plow down the fences and keep going through everything. And I see that. Um, he just, I can an see that. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And cool. he never forgets. That's for sure. He never forgets. He never forgets <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he can plow through everything. Yeah, he's really mm-hmm. strong. Never forgets. Mm-hmm. And he um, he likes to have hose fights. I don't know. <laughs> to think of other things. <laughs> the important things, you know. Yeah, the important oh. things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, he could probably be a real power hose fight thing you know if it, if he yeah. really needed it and just it'd be like those firemen or the um the guys when there's riots that the policemen that mm. do the fire hose at everybody and just blow them off their feet and stuff he could do that if he needed to that'd be oh, good cool yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> um okay shin the seventh shin v something um asks if alexander invited himself over for dinner and offered a spot to me and Jenny at the Blue Heron. How would you respond, Mom? Just based on what you know now. Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, yeah. also assume that we're children and not adults. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your children? Because if it was now, I'd say you know, go ahead and go. Because because um, we're adults, and and just re- re- you know, record the whole thing. You know, so that you can, because he's tricky. And if you were kids, I'd be like, yeah, let's go. But I I need to be the chaperone because, yeah, I mean, it's hmm. kind of an opportunity to go over and, huh. and um, you know, get a free meal. And it'd be interesting. <laughs> and um, just get a like, like, trick you in. Oh, not yeah, just I one free meal, free. mom. Like, 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 as in. Like you're going to the school to for school. like summer school. Oh, I was thinking dinner. Okay, wait a minute. No, he's he's come okay. he's come for the free meal, and to, then he's to offered that. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's he's offered different. summer okay. school. Yeah. Oh, brother. Yeah, I think I so I think I'd let you guys go. Yeah, I just like I just give you a bunch of instructions before to watch <laughs> after each other and to be careful. And okay. um, yeah, hmm. I think that's Interesting. neat. All but, right, cool. Um, so we'll, may, we may come back to a similar question later and just yeah, see I if usually let you guys do not. stuff. You know, you yeah, have a lot of, it's an opportunity. You know, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so um, our last but definitely not least question um, is from Wildbo himself. Um, Ooh. so Ooh. he specifically was saying um he was having a conversation with his dad over the holidays. And he remarked that there's some things he doesn't get in pale in the discussion around it. Um, his dad thinks there's some baseline understanding of fantasy worlds, Dungeons and Dragons, and magic that a lot of the audience gets that he doesn't. Um, what uh-huh. degree do you think the story leans on assumptions about reader knowledge? And do you think some things need a clearer explanation? <laughs> I love this. That's great. And I'll be careful. I'll try to be careful because... I, I think um, the first thing I have to say, though, is that um, back to that, who would I want to have over for dinner? I uh, One for sure, I'd love to have Wild Bo's dad over for dinner <laughs> with everybody else. And we could sit at the ch- at the senior table. Instead of a kid's table, we'll have a senior <laughs> table. <laughs> and we could talk about, you know, like, oh, how, how all these kids are on their phone too much and blah, blah, blah. You know, all those things <laughs> we're supposed to talk about. You know, because I'm kind of with him. It's this, um, the, the stories are probably more difficult for me to get into because um, a lot of the vocabulary is new to me. And, and, um, like others, familiar, uh, agar or whatever that is. I don't even know how to say mm-hmm. it, Auger you know, or, and yeah. auger. And, um, and I, I, I finally made a list to understand it better. So I don't have to keep going back, you know, to the chapters and stuff. And I think that's a lot of my problem. A lot of it is probably my brain too, that I just, it's harder for me to remember everything and to get it all. But, but, um, Part of it is when you when you give us like a new page of stuff, there is a page of details that are all new that we're supposed to get. Like the like the um, forest ribbon trail, 
there there were five objects and it was all you know or or the gifts and there's oh it, there was this one part about fairies and um there's these different kind of fairies and different kind of fairyland or something mm-hmm. and i finally was like am i supposed to remember this i'm you know and I didn't, but, you know, I started writing it down and then I thought, oh, just forget it. And I think you're going to go into it later. And it sounds really interesting, but part of my brain kind of clamps up because I'm thinking it, it's just too much stuff to remember. And I can't remember the last thing. So that's, that's where I'm having trouble. And I'm kind of with Wild Bo's dad. <laughs> but um, <laughs> okay. one thing the extra materials help a lot. And um, so I'm really... Um, starting to go back to those a bit. And I love the drawings. The drawings are wonderful. You should do t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think um, well, what I was going to say is I do think that like things like familiar and stuff, like I was a lot more prepared for. But with like the forest ribbon trail, I don't remember exactly, but I, part of me wants to say that I had the like, extra materials notes or whatever it was on the forest ribbon trail open while I was reading that section. So it's not, it's not like, I think even for people in the community, he's doing things at a very high level, but we're very into like digging through it and opening a bunch of pages as opposed to just kind of like reading it more casually, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, um, or sorry, what I was telling you earlier, um, cause I was kind of talking to you about this earlier. Like, I think that, um, because Malia and I, like, we've been reading it from the start and we've, like, pretty much read um, a section or, like, a little chapter, like, that he puts out um, per week, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, at least as we have time. Um, it might get backed up a little bit, but we're relatively caught up and we relatively um, keep up with reading. Whereas I think, like, if you're kind of binge reading, like, a bunch and then, like, uh-huh. you don't touch it for um a month because you're because t- you're, you're doing a bunch of stuff and then you come back to it i think it's harder to remember things that way right um yeah but i think that's Aaliyah, true too. um introduced you to um the audiobook just r- really recently so um hopefully that'll help you start retaining things a little better yeah, yeah i think you so can even go back I'm- go ahead I-, I was gonna say you can even go back and um listen to some of the earlier chapters because it might help you Either you'll maybe hear a conversation where Toad Swallow explains something and you'll be like, oh, okay, right. I get that better now. Um, or, you know, I, I, it, you'll pick up details. Because even with the podcast I do with Jenny, I'm listening back to our old episodes um, to fill out the prediction tracker. And there yeah. was something today where I was like, oh my gosh, that thing. I forgot about that thing. I bet it's coming back to the story. And like, um, huh. it might help. Oh, that's neat. I mean, shoots. I'm supposed to be the one that, like, kind of knows what they're talking about on that podcast. And, like, (laughs) I still forget a bunch of things (laughs) that that we've gone over or uh, haven't, you know, don't fully understand things 100% until someone um, jumps in and explains it. So it's not, like, Mm -hmm. just you. Okay. Well, you know, and I'm more of a visual learner, but um, I Hmm. think having the audio, you know, after I read it will just make it sink in a little better. That the guy who's re- reads it by the way i can't remember his name but he's really good he does a great job and um, so it's it's actually a group of people um i'm not sure which oh, really? chapters you listen to um yeah but there's um there's this group of fans who they all sign up for different chapters um wow. and like record a chapter and put it up um the, a couple of them do it like fairly regularly and there's definitely one or two people who are in charge um but yeah um, and I yeah, mean, well, yeah especially for, for like that's neat non-professionals it's really awesome that they take the time out of their you know lives to do it yeah no I kidding really he, he did a great job so that'll be great yeah. and maybe it'll help me get my steps in huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> I read it and then go do that um one other thing that was interesting that you were saying about having both of your things open you guys have been telling me I should get two two what are they called monitors get a and, monitor um, <laughs> see i don't even know i'll wait till you guys come over and hook it up for me i have no idea but okay. i'm just one thing see, to point out yeah. that well wait wait one thing is mm-hmm. that um wild Bo's dad and i when we were in school we took notes you know like in a binder or in a uh, in a notebook and um mm-hmm. then we go back and highlight things and do stuff like that and um, I would never be able to take a class and take the notes on my computer. It just doesn't, mm. 
it wouldn't, it's not that I can't type fast enough. It's just that my brain likes it better, you know, written down. It just, it, hmm. it sinks in a lot better for some reason. And I think part of it could be an aged thing where, you know, it's just, um, it's hard for me to go back to those materials and switch back and forth without having it printed out and certain things highlighted or something. And hmm. that's like a guess, but I wonder if that's a little bit of what our problem is. I don't know. Maybe. I was going to say, um, one problem with you getting another monitor is you would just open another 50 tabs that you'd never close <laughs> on it. You should see as how many tabs Everyone at home, open. you I should see 10, her 20, computer <laughs> because she, I don't think that she's ever closed a tab before without like you know what i have but i found this wonderful i found this wonderful thing called history and you can be like oh go back and open your 34 tabs i'm like yes (laughs) you know so now i can i don't know because it's stuff that i have to remember to do before i close the tab you you guys that's why you have like the favorites thing for right no, that's so full of junk. I mean, th- what? <laughs> what? That thing, that thing has hundreds of things in it. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Are you nightmare. laughing? <laughs> what? It is a nightmare. It really For, like, is. Like bookmarks? Like, uh, mom, okay. is it bookmarks' mom, favorites? They're, mom, would, yes. would, can you yes, open ma'am? up your Gmail and tell us how many unread emails you currently have? <laughs> well, that's not nice. Really? <laughs> Okay, I will. I'm you don't afraid. have to. I just I'm not embarrassed. Okay. Except if I open up my if I open up my Gmail, I'm probably gonna lose you guys. Oh, you'll never come back. Yeah, don't, don't, wait, don't, wait, don't do might. it then. You sure you can do it on your phone? No. Look on your phone. Jeez. Really? It's the same thing. Where's my phone? What? Okay. It's not very okay. <laughs> don't mail. It's a good start. Four hundred and ninety five. What? Really? That's it? <laughs> yeah, you thought it was Mom, I'm so proud of you. Oh, thanks. It used to be thousands. <laughs> yeah, really? that's true. No, but it's better. It must have gone through. Yeah, thanks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not that bad. That's great, Mom. I mean, good to know. proud of you. Good to know. It's not great, but it's <laughs> it could be it could be worse. Good. Now so I'm worried where they all went. Where did they all go? Tuck on it. I mean, don't be worried because no, it's not I like you're going to read them. While, maybe I did that when I was at Jenny's house. I was taking care of babies around thanksgiving mm. and sometimes i would just sit there and delete things <laughs> okay know. well there you go that's that's a good start yeah okay good <laughs> all right uh, <laughs> it's time for you to go over your three things oh yay okay Woo. okay number one i'm anxious to see more about what happens with matthew and edith i hope that comes up next because that's a good one um number two i like mr lie and number three, why can't Avery eat meat now? There's something so happening. She's, do you want to take well, that one, Jen? No, you don't. I feel like know I've been yet, talking a lot. You can take it. Yeah, they've, they've kind of gone over it a little bit. She's um, sort of talked about it. I mean, she was t- describing how you know she comes out of the paths, and she was thinking about the wolf who wanted to eat her, and like thinking about it eating the stick, and thinking about it eating Snowdrop. And how, like, she oh. was willing to just, like, bring this little possum into this trail to, like, sacrifice it for herself. And just, like, the smell of meat and everything is, like, grossing her out, you know? She's just, like, dealing with the aftermath of the trail oh, okay. and the experience she went through, you know? Okay. I just wondered if it was something further that had to do with the choir or something awful like that. And I hope not. Okay. It so. seems from her thoughts to have a lot to do with the trail. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we also have mom's book recommendation. I'm just going to ask you, mom, like off the top of your head, um, are you reading anything that you want to recommend? Because we kind of prepared something different today. (laughs) Yeah, I'm always reading something, but I, um, I think I'll just let you go ahead. I'm not really ready with that. Okay. Not even like a title or a quick thing, just in case I I don't want people to be disappointed. What am I reading? I know. Okay, they're not going to want to watch recommendations. Let, me, let yeah. me think about what I'm reading real quick. Um, sure. What's it called? Oh, actually, um, I read this book. I would recommend this. And I I, I don't want to get into it really because I want to hear Jenny's thing. But it was a book <laughs> called The Plot. And it was okay. by Correlitz, K-O-R-E-L-I-T-Z. And that was a really, really interesting mystery. They really got me at the end. Hmm. So, um so that was a fun one. It, that's not a that's not a girly book at all either. It's just like a, anybody would like this. 
Can you give us like a quick hmm, summary so- of it or or just like kind of like a brief like what it's about? Um about it. I'm trying to remember the beginning. Um yeah. sorry, I was kind of putting you on the spot. Yeah, it's okay. I'm trying to remember um if it's this one or if I'm getting it mixed up. I could also Google the plot um and see if it has a synopsis. Where is the plot? The plot. Um by Coralitz, you said? Yeah. Um how do you get a synopsis? It is about a story too good not to steal and the writer who steals it. <gasps> oh, oh right? yeah. Yeah. Oh, what happens? It was um he sort of stole it and sort of didn't, but um he was a teacher that um he had this jerky a, a te- uh, like a teacher that was in a, um like a um a school or a session a, a, some a group of classes for authors and he he did this one really good book and then he was stuck he had writer's block for like two years and he this one jerky student wouldn't listen to him at all and just basically said i've got a plot that um that I don't even have to tell you about it. It's just, this is going to make me tons of money and it's going to go straight to the bestseller list and blah, blah, blah. And he was real arrogant and a jerky and stuff. And this guy basically died and um, the teacher found somehow his notes. I don't remember all of it, but, and, and he actually, he didn't even have anything from the, from this guy he just had like a synopsis like oh this is what we're gonna do and it was about his family um, and um so he kind of went from there and made his own book that was totally famous but one of the family members kind of caught on that wait how did he know that even though he didn't use their names or anything it was such an unusual story and then she was after him like trying to kill him and all this kind of stuff it was really cool it was really interesting <laughs> That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, you guys would like it. Yeah, it was really good. Hmm. So, um, yeah, and I didn't think he really stole it because he didn't even ever read any of the stuff, but it was just too close to what happened in this family. Hmm. So, yeah, it, it was a good book. You guys would like it. All right. Well, thanks for recommending that. Um, yeah, sure. Just to warn you, um, everyone who's listening, um, I'm going to rant about a movie that I saw <laughs> on Netflix. And it's a Hallmarky type of movie. So if that sounds terrible, um, feel free to skip to the end. Of the pod- hey, y'all. Malia, the editor here. My sister does proceed to talk about the movie, The Christmas Wedding Planner, I believe, for... Hmm, let me check to see exactly how long it was. About 35 minutes. <laughs> a little bit less. Um, and we decided that it's very long and very hilarious. She recounts the entire plot of the movie. Um, But that being said, it is a little bit too long, I think, for this episode. And we haven't done a Doof After Dark in a while. So um, for those of you patrons, you'll be able to listen to that whole episode just as soon as it's posted. Not episode. That whole segment just as soon as it's posted on the Doof After Dark feed. Um, And for you non-patrons, if you donate to doof media you'll be able to listen to the joys and horrors that is the plot of that movie and there are some fun twists involved not only in the plot but also in the telling of the movie itself so i do actually recommend it and i hope that you all check it out okay back to the show that might have to be a doof after dark because that's a long one but (laughs) it was uh, a lot it was a lot um i couldn't help it though i feel like i just had to keep on you know (laughs) that's great on going I'm glad you think so. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, um, here I'll go. Now. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> like I've talked too much. I'm like, yeah. okay. It's the part of the episode where we remind y'all about the giveaway. Um, our mom makes cool cards, like greeting cards, and we want to give one to one of you. So to enter the giveaway, comment on the Reddit post for this episode in r slash parahumans or tweet at us at pale comparison with the hashtag our mom critiques wild bow and we'll enter all the names in a random drawing and we will send one to the winner um the most recent winner is taste of death on reddit so congrats to you and thank you so much for engaging with this podcast um 
Yeah. As a reminder, yes. uh, check out your men- messages, mentions, whatever on Reddit in case that's where we tried to talk to you and give you a free card. Yes. And mom, I just wanted to let you know, um, Taste of Death uh, said that they looked at your website and they thought your <laughs> cards looked really creative and beautiful. Oh, so they're excited to get a card. Oh, thank you. That's so great. Yeah, that's really that's nice. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, super sweet. It's great. <laughs> Yeah, what kind of cards should I make for this episode? Hmm. Hmm. Should be one of the things I got. You can make like a if barbecue. Anybody has, oh, <laughs> barbecue's good. Yeah. I did I did want to make milk. the eyeball necklaces, milk. but I missed that one. Oh, milk. Milk would be good. Or the t shirts. Yeah. Mm, so anyway, I gotta think about it. Gotta think okay. about it. Anyway, we ready for the outro? Indeed. Yep, that's your your first mom. That's me. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening. (laughs) If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to support Wild Bow, go to patreon.com slash wild bow. And if you want to support me, check out my blog at www.createwithcheryl.me. You can also check out Pale in Comparison, a podcast where Malia uses her knowledge of pale to guess what happens in Pact, one of Wildbow's other web serials, and I try to not give anything away. In addition, check out all the other great shows in the Doof Network and support us at patreon.com slash doofmedia. Yeah, in particular, um, the Doof cast has covered two movies recently that actually came out recently, so I can't listen to the... Well, I guess I could, but Spider-Man and the new Matrix... um, and mm. I haven't seen them yet, but if you've seen them, um, and or don't either. care, I don't. Um, they're 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 on the hot new topics and movies and films, so you should check them out. Um, mm-hmm. But you can follow us on Twitter at Pale Comparison or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail dot com. Also, be on a lookout for a Reddit post where you can share your thoughts on this episode and enter the giveaway. And that's it. Have a- <laughs> That's Yay. it. That's it, guys. <laughs> you have a good a good day. Yay. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.